Hey, how's it going everybody? This is Craig Peters here from Sound Iron, and in today's video, I'm gonna be taking you through a new tips and tricks video showing you guys how to use guitar pedals as plugins in Cubase. So being a guitarist over the past 20 years, I'm no stranger to guitar pedals. I've been using them for a long time. Uh, since sort of diving into the digital world and just using a lot of plugins, I haven't really experimented with a lot of uh, guitar pedals inside the DAW, but since I've been getting my hands on a few new cool pedals, I've been really wanting to experiment to see how I can use them sort of in conjunction with maybe some different virtual instruments and that sort of thing. So today we're gonna to be working in Cubase, which is the DAW that I use on a daily basis. Um, I'm gonna be showing you guys how I went about routing it with my interface and, and how I basically routed it all in Cubase. So for you, it might be a little different, but for any of you Cubase users, you'll be able to follow this pretty easily. And then for anyone else, I'm sure most DAWs have similar types of setup. So hopefully you should be able to learn something from this and be able to start using some guitar pedals as plugins. So for any of you that are wondering why would you want to use guitar pedals when you have all these really cool plugins, um, for me it's really just a matter of trying to kind of introduce a little bit more of that kind of analog type sound in with the digital type instruments just to kind of combine the two a little bit. I mean I'm not really a big owner of a lot of uh, analog or hardware gear or nothing like that so this is kind of a fun experimentation for me. Uh, and it's really simple to do, you know, without needing a bunch of crazy expensive rat gears. And the pedal that we'll be using today is the Flux Echo by Horizon Devices. It's a really cool pedal. It's got a lot of uh, delays and analog reverbs and some really cool reverse effects. It's got three different modes that you can play around with and we'll be showing those today um, along with how to set everything up. So as far as connecting everything today, I'm going to be using my Steinberg UR816C audio interface. What I'm doing is I'm going out of the audio interface into the pedal with two cables because it's stereo and then we're going to go out of the pedal and then into the interface into the inputs which I'm believe I believe I'm using seven and eight so for my audio interface it also comes with some software and pretty much what we're going to be doing is opening this up in the settings going to the line output four left and right which is uh, what is going out of my audio interface into the pedal and I change that to DA direct and uh, you'll see why in a little bit once I go into uh, the routing the audio uh, connections in Cubase. So once that's done, go into Cubase. We're gonna open up the audio connections and you're gonna wanna go to external effects. So I've already set this up, but I'm just gonna go ahead and show you a little bit of what I did. So all you do is you basically add an external effects and then you can name it however you want. As far as the send bus, this is where you see the direct five and six. That's what we just set up in the UR816C software. And then we go down here to the return bus. So basically we're sending it and then we're gonna return. And what we're gonna be returning into is input seven and eight. That is where I have the two cables right here running into, actually it's the back of my audio interface, but there's inputs on the back because there's eight total. So you just set it up like that. And then pretty much after that, you're ready to go. Then there's two ways that you can set this up. So you can either use it as just like a plug-in on a single instrument. That is one way, but if you want to use it across multiple different instruments and that sort of thing, what I would do is create an effects track. So that is what I have right here. And then you could just load up an instance. Uh, for this, I named it Flex Echo. And then you're going to see this right here. Uh, you can do some different stuff with this if you want to, you know, change the sends amount or, or add any kind of delay compensation, stuff like that. For me, I just kept everything at noon, kept everything at zero. Just I'm just using it like that. So the thing is, when you're going to use it on something like an effects track, pretty much what I like to do is I like to take the mix and just crank it all the way. You know, so that way whatever is being sent is getting the full amount. And then right here, then you just go into your track. So I have Emotional Piano loaded up. I just kind of put together a little sketch just to kind of show how it would sound in something like an ambient type track. And then you just go into your sends, send it to the flux, and then dial in however much you want. And that's pretty much it. And then I already have both of these routed because I want them to both sort of live in this sort of uh, you know, kind of swirly ethereal space. Cause I wanted, you know, let's say you're crafting something, you want to have like a real like ambient atmospheric kind of vibe. Well then this is perfect because you just have them both live in that space, you know, and you can dial in the send amounts if you want one to have a little bit more or less. Uh, so I also have Voice of Wind 80 
loaded up. And this is just one of my favorite solo vocal libraries of ours. It just has like a really ethereal, warm, soft sound to it. And then for the piano, I'm using our emotional piano. I have the gentle blur preset loaded up, which has a kind of a really soft sort of uh, felt like sound. And that's pretty much it as far as setting everything up. And then uh, the cool thing about it is that you have a little bit more of a hands-on approach. I mean, plugins are cool. You can dial them, you can automate them and stuff, but it's kind of fun to sort of play around with the more like hardware analog type units. So with this pedal, it's got a lot of really cool features. Uh, we won't go with too in depth, but I want to sort of show the different modes that it has because it's a really fun pedal and I really like using it. Um, so mode one has this kind of like reverse delay ambient kind of... And I really like that kind of stuff. I'm, I'm always looking for some like cool reverse delay type things and I really like how this sounds. This is kind of the sound I've been looking for for a while. And then there's also this middle one which is more of a more of a like a, I think like an analog type delay. And then the third mode has this kind of shimmery top to it with some analog stuff going on. I, I can't remember exactly all like what's going on, but I usually just sort of, when I'm sort of figuring out what kind of vibe I want, I'll just kind of play around with the different modes and then tweak some of the settings before I sort of, all right, cool, this is what I wanted to do and then bake it in. So the vibe of mode three, it's really cool. It has this kind of like shimmery top to it. And for any of you who have been watching any of the sound iron sessions and things like that, uh, I really love using the Shimmer plugin from Valhalla and this kind of has a little bit of that and with the tone knob you can adjust sort of how much brightness you want. So if you want your, your you know, delay tails a, bit, a little bit darker and not so bright you can turn this down. And this is even good too, especially if you're in mode two. But for using mode three, I really like using the tone all the way up because it really adds this bright sort of shimmery, like angelic overtone to it. It's really cool. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn it on to mode three. And then let's just play this track. It's gonna have emotional piano and voice of wind 80 running through it. So let's check it out. Ooh. So using that mode in something like this, it's really cool because as the vocals go up, it sort of adds this angelic shimmeriness to it. And I really like that. So this is just another fun way of working. If you just have some pedals laying around, you want to try routing them and just using them in combination with some different synths or VSTs or even on vocals or whatever. So I hope you all enjoyed this video. Make sure to like it if you do, subscribe if you haven't already, and let us know in the comments what pedals you like to use in this sort of fashion. It'd be cool to see sort of the different approaches that you guys have as well. So I wanna thank you all so much for watching and we'll see you in the next one. Take care.